Welcome back as we begin the API-driven company track. Who here works at a company that they consider to be API-driven? All right, good, you're at the right conference. Who here wants to learn, <laughs> wants to learn some more to be even better at that? Yeah, so as you, as you listen to, to these talks and hear this, these, uh, this great selection this morning, uh, it will really set the foundation for that. And uh, as you take notes, just try to pull one or two things that you can bring back to the office with you later this week. So I'm Adam Duvander. I'm going to MC this. I work with API Days uh, on API Scene, which Mady mentioned this morning. And as you can tell from my voice, I'm from the United States. Uh, I live on the west coast of the United States, and I flew in yesterday morning, and because Mady made a soap joke, I can say that I had a very restful night, and so now I'm ready for API Days today. We're gonna kick it off with someone who has been a longtime API Days collaborator. Uh, Cyril is the Director of Strategy at Faber Novell, mm -hmm. and looking forward to your talk. Thank Already? you, Cyril. Okay, yeah. so let's move on. Uh, hi, everyone. <coughs> A long time is actually uh, around seven years uh, because uh, uh, we decided in Paris to create API, API days around uh, seven years ago. And the good news is that I think we're starting to be audible by big corporations. <laughs> so maybe in the next three to four years, stuff might happen. I think it will happen faster uh, because this presentation is more about what I observe uh, into the market right now uh, than anything else. I had the privilege to work for around seven, let's call it, uh, members of the CAC 40, so very large French corporation, uh, some leading the CAC 40, uh, since about, uh, CAC 40, sorry, uh, since uh, about one year. And this is kind of uh, all what I hear from them roughly and the first insights and solutions they are trying to put in place around APIs. And actually, of course, if you discuss with the head of marketing of a very big cosmetic company, he doesn't even know what an API is, and I'm not sure he needs to. Nonetheless, he's getting interested because he has a challenge, and we'll discuss that challenge. First of all, all companies, sorry, up, uh, understood one thing at least, is that software is creating value on the market right now. If you look at something that seems uh, obvious to you, maybe, but uh, not, right now, the five biggest market caps, and uh, Anamco is only next week, uh, are tech companies or software companies. Even Amazon, and we've been saying that for a long time, is more of a software company uh, than a retail company. Their competitive advantage is software, and I believe that uh, large corporations are beginning to understand that we are entering an era where software and consumer will have more value than assets. I always took that background image because I love to remember that this, which uh, as you might recognize is a steam engine, not really an API uh, driven uh, device, but an interesting one, was once a competitive advantage. Uh, in the beginning of the 1800s, if you had one of those machines, regardless of what you were going to do with it, you had a competitive advantage and your company would thrive better and grow faster than other companies. And right now we're at the consumer era, we are starting to see that if you want to get money and get funding and get uh, investments from your shareholders, you need to talk about Consumers and consumers, uh, it seems of use, are only interacting with companies with software right now. I always do the same jokes with the uh, Comexes. You know, I ask who doesn't have a smartphone, and then I say thank you because nobody uh, raised its hand. As of today, the humanity has a smartphone, at least 70% of it, and is using it to interact all the time with the brands. So if you want to stay your company, it's interesting, but they start to realize that they don't have a choice, and we we'll come back to it. It's not necessarily, you know, just doing a website and some applications. It's deeper than that. What they also noticed, uh, I don't know if you uh, remember, but two years ago, if you talked about digital or numerical or whatever the words with a the corporation, they reduced it to marketing. 
to them, basically, okay, it's cool because we can talk more and faster and maybe get some data about our consumer. So it was pretty much segregated in marketing. Right now, a big trend, and I think that's the future and that's cool, is that it's not marketing anymore. Some of them, for instance, I won't say which one, but you can guess, is noticing that a company, I don't know if you know Glossier, it's a $200 million company in five years uh, in the US, is almost a tech company. 40% of its staff is coders and putting code on clouds. Which to a big operator in cosmetics, a French one for instance, is very, a little bit different than its own ratio. Uh, even in operation when there's five to 10% of IT people, none of them coding, then they consider it's a good ratio. Today, if you want competitiveness, if you want to do your job better on the market, you need a lot of people putting a lot of code and building a lot of software for your company. And they take notice. For instance, they don't put it toward the consumer only. Bits are, for instance, they have a, a shade selector that helps them advise you for the best uh, cosmetics you'd need. But more importantly, they are handling and building their own point of sales uh, software. They did not use something retail or on shelves. They build it because that way they can better synchronize all what they know about their products and all what their customers tell them. So to them, the reason they're internalizing it and not using something external, it's because it's a competitive advantage. And the good news is that more and more of these large corporations are starting to understand that it's not about doing a website anymore, it's about competitive advantage. Another example, this company is selling flour, bergamot. Theoretically, nothing extraordinarily new here, except they build their own ERP. And they build their own ERP because basically that way, they can be way more efficient than any uh, fl flour retailer. They shorten the time to buy to the time to shelves by more than half, just by building their own assets. And on top of it, they got an economic competitive advantage. It's way cheaper for them to manage their own software and it's their own fulfillment than uh, to competitors. And that's a real competitive advantage, probably more so than having a cool website or a good application to choose your flower. And at least this is percentage of EBIT. This is percentage of growth. This is not just something. And if you look, uh, can you do it uh, even at a larger scale? Some did. For instance, not all of Nike now, but a big part of Nike is going from shoe wear to software. Why? Because the shoe is becoming just one element that they happen to sell of a whole ecosystem, which is Nike run ecosystem. Where there's a run keeper like, you can plug in two other run keepers, you can monitor your health, you can monitor your progress. And that puts them in an incredible position. I was discussing with another large company last week, uh, Danone, to name them, saying, do you realize that no, Nike knows what kind of food I need after I had a run? <laughs> and you don't. Maybe there could be something interesting to build with that, because Nike at least understood what it is to build an ecosystem. But to do that, they had to build their own software. Basically, they let go of the hardware, too hard, too expensive, and they kept on with the software. And like we keep saying, you won't build a differentiated competitive advantage by basically a programming SAP better. What you need to do, if it's a competitive advantage, for instance, to know how much I run and when and where, then you have to build your own software. And all these digital factories, etc., all this capacity is new software. And all these corporations are starting to do that. So this is, you know, the traditional consultant slide. Stop thinking about markets, think about consumer needs and consumer experience. Stop thinking about value chain and start thinking about ecosystems. How do you integrate within other ecosystems to create value? Stop thinking about business and think about what you want to be in six years because that's what the consumer wants to hear. The good news, they're trying to start to do that. But to do that, they need somewhere to do it. And our motto at faber Noble is that we think, although it's a little bit of a shorthand, everybody will need a somewhere where I have tens or hundreds of people building software, and let's call it a software factory or a tech factory or a digital factory, that's the acronym I'm at fashion right now, because that's what you need to scale innovation. Let's take a little bit of uh, INS rather than rabbit hole, but it works too. First, all and a lot of companies in the CAC 40 
already started this effort. Roughly, more than 60% of them, six of the 10, already have or are building some kind of uh, dispositive that will help them address the challenge. Secondly, this is a bit intellectual, but bear with me. Uh, this was any corporation in the 2000s, because this was the optimal organization for any given market where nothing moves that much before software. And in that time, basically, you've got BUs, either by brands, either by regions, usually both, which job is to go to market. And then you have a huge box. I was working for those huge box, which is called IT department, or DSC in French, where they have one thing, please do absolutely nothing, because everything you do is very, very expensive. And when you meet, it's even more expensive than it was. Remember when we were buying blades for roughly 10,000 euros? You can buy now a USB card for 10 euros somewhere, and it's the same capacity. So right now, this organization, which once again was optimal in the 2000s, it's not a judgment, is in our today's world where everybody wants quick access with a smartphone, not efficient. At Faber-Novel, and I'm not ashamed to say it, we've done that for years, POCs, MVPs. But the reality of it is that even if you are very, very bullish, what does it change for a two billion business to have a conversational robot for one part of the products? What does it really change except put you to the standard? Even if you're a huge corporation, you have six e-commerce sites. Cool, that's 1% of revenue. A lot of the corporations right now are thinking about scale, and scale is all the employees, all the, all the consumers, all the channels, all the operations. It's not, you know, the, the test in the New York agency because it would be so fun if uh, some screen with the touch capabilities was in the entrance. That doesn't change a thing. Today, as we saw, I need to go into industrial processes and modify them. And to do that, it's no more the PC, POC era. What you need to do, is A, the two things, which seems absurd, but we've never done it in large corporations. The first one is turn IT into software, which is a very, very difficult task, and we'll come back to that, of course, which means make it agile, make it fast, makes it easy to uh, put in production, makes it ever going and ever iterating, and not just, you know, every first of the month. Secondly, and actually from a business standpoint, that's the main challenge, give it access to distribution so they can reach customers. Look at all the efforts that have been done by this corporation, except from Nike on one of its brand of shoes. Nobody gives access to all its customer, all its employees, all its channels to innovation. We do POCs. So the challenge, and that's why they are building these digital factories, is in a sense to find the next optimal, and the next optimal is to act a little bit like, uh, let's say, an Amazon or a Glossier or a Bergamot, by using software to turn it into a competitive advantage. And that's very important. Software cannot just be to put your business to the standard, meaning, you know, uh, everybody has a website, everybody has an app, and then we're fighting equal again. The reality is that now we are at the scale and the maturity of the market where the big question becomes what is a competitive advantage? If doing inventory faster is a competitive advantage, use software to do your inventories faster. If uh, refurbishing your channel faster is a competitive advantage, do that. If pleasing your customers and making a nice app is a competitive advantage, of course do it too. But it cannot just be customer facing, no, it has to be within the operation. How do I get in velocity on the whole operation so that I can behave a little bit more like what my customer expects, meaning knowing me wherever I go. If you look at Sephora, they did that little thing, but the synchronized legacy system, transaction, and human people in retail. That's what they use API for. That's what you need to, because when I go to Sephora and they say, hi, Mr. Rod, do you still put your points on your daughter's card? That's a competitive advantage. <laughs> the other retailers don't tell me that, so I will probably continue to shop at Sephora. But to do that, imagine the effort. They had to look into databases, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, we're all experts, I guess you, you see where I'm going, but it's hard to do. And it needs to be done for all the shops in all the world. And there's probably about 20,000 people using these iPads right now. And that's scale. But when you do it, it works. So how do you do that and how do you ensure it? I'm going to try to conclude quickly on that, uh, on the matter. Uh, it's a question of getting started. First, we have a big challenge. You need to 
give access to software to legacy system and that's difficult we've been told for 20 years that uh, for security reason you shouldn't do that plus you have to be very very careful probably some of your business processes are running on stressed servers that you don't want to over stress but it's doable apis are that for that you have to make them smart of course you have to make it for all customers all distribution all employees and i insist just doing it for one percent of your business is not transforming your business is doing something cool for one percent of your business all employees all consumers secondly think about making that a competitive advantage very difficult challenge harmonized culture you know uh, like i keep saying data means nothing so you have to find other vocabulary to express what you need to do because otherwise you have marketing talking about data it talking about data and everybody talking about anything else and then you have to promote uh, this software to recreate your industry standard very quickly a uh, real tell two retailers i was working on at the same time was is a huge luxury uh, house in paris uh, left uh, left rive for those who understand and the other one is a specialist of low, uh, low cost destocking when we first interacted with them they do the same job because once you're a leader in your industry you tend to think that you're doing your industry not your competitive advantage we had to work with them quite a lot to have them go back to what they really are this is what they are doing retail for one is for fun and a cheap basket with a lot of cool stuff the other one is well is for my 35 years of marriage with my wife not the same job at all and once you're there then you can start thinking about how do i build my competitive advantage on all the touch points that's what now is becoming consumer centric and using software to do it and it can be as simple as hello mr Watt with a smile or as complicated as the scheme of points and purchases that give me access to other stuff it doesn't matter you have to take care of me with software all the time but when you do it works this one does custom shampoo for any type of hair and in that case every shampoo is very very unique and they're using ml otherwise it's just somebody doing shampoo <laughs> but they found their competitive advantage with software and to do that and i rest with that uh, and then we we'll get the little homage this slide which describes what your ideal view of an api platform that works within a digital factory you've got your legacy system addressed by apis and making available you've got your competitive advantage which is in the new system you're going to build yourself then you'll decide if you want to distribute it or not and stop wanting to do uh, payment systems or uh, maps when some other people do it well although you have to choose your ecosystem and you will work with but if you build that plus a few bits and pieces you should do it and i always use that slide because this slide is used in a lot of customers right now it's kind of their model and we presented it with Medi here not here exactly at epita a little while better exactly seven years ago <laughs> gives you an idea of first how right we are and where secondly how persistent you need to be to make it happen nonetheless the good news is that and uh, i will rest my case here uh, as of now corporation is beginning to understand why they need that because they have the business cases on top of it because they have these dmvbs these digital brands that challenge them by doing their job better through software if you're the leader of a market nothing is as terrible from a business perspective as some young guy doing better than you do because of software so right as what i observe now we are at the beginning of think of a new cycle of business where companies want scale they want impact they want tens of persons of their business impacted by digital and the good news is that in that case maybe there will be more and more attendees in this conference uh, if there's not that many strikes little thing be careful what you should do as an operating model to us and that's a recommendation i did it twice and it worked don't do a digital business in the business because then you're substituting business to bad business doesn't work what you need to do is create an external software vendor which will contract with the normal business as if it was its exclusive software supplier we try to put that in place in several places it's a little challenge is governance why but it works and once you do it suddenly you become a solution provider to your own business and that's very powerful 
and then depending on the companies, some very smart one could say, why don't I, furnish, I publish it for all my industry? You talked about Adidas, uh, I think, in the previous keynotes. Or maybe you just want to keep it for yourself, it's, it's a competitive advantage. Nonetheless, I think this is an exciting era coming from that, and I hope that helps you set up your mind around that. Thank you very much. All right, great, thank you. Any Thank questions you for, you for Cyril here? There we are. I'll come. OK. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Hey, everyone. I'm Mark Boyd. Uh, Hi, Mark. Thanks, Cyril. <laughs> I've heard your talks every year. And I was just thinking how the ones you showed seven years ago are still relevant today. It's amazing. Um, <clears throat> my question was about the culture internally, like you showed a slide um, when you showed the business units and the IT changing. The issue with that is that often with APIs, it's almost like the tail uh, wagging the dog. So you're changing how business units are competing over budgets, for example. How do you get them to change as far as wanting to keep their budget but then reuse uh, APIs from other budget, from other lines of business. Like that's where I'm seeing a lot of um, enterprises and governments stuck on trying to change because the budget model won't adjust to this new worldview. Uh, first, thank you very much for the introduction, but uh, flattery will get you nothing. Uh, the second part is a very interesting question because wow, well, are you okay? Oh, heard there? Cool. Uh, sorry. Um, it's a difficult question because, yeah, it's, uh, it's against the usual mindset of, you know, uh, IT managing, uh, invoicing and pays and boring stuff, and then businesses doing the school stuff. So what I saw starting to work, once again, I've seen a lot of intention. There's been a lot of efforts put by corporation doing that, but I haven't seen one working perfectly well at scale yet. It's in the process. The main challenge, I think, and what seems to work, is to contractualize with businesses, being brands, between ch being channel management, being territorial management, like a software editor would. First, they have people, strangely enough, the company I'm thinking of is using its ex uh, control de gestion, which are financial managers to do that, because they have a business culture, a finance culture, and they just need to explain. They go to see all the brands, all the region, and say, okay, if we built a common SSO for all the customers, would you use it? Yes, no. Okay, are you sure? Because these are the benefits. And then they contract. They say, okay, we're gonna produce this for N brands or N entities. It's gonna cost that overall. I'm gonna cut it in N and do the per equation myself. But you have to engage to use it on every asset and then uh, pay for it as part of your budget. Otherwise, you dare, uh, they, the business either perceived, perceived it as a cool, cheap gadgets, and then they use it or they don't, or uh, they manage to do it or not, or because they don't pay for it, they think it's free, whereas we all know that, you know, uh, even in API, a server is a server. So the big question is, to me, more than governance, it's also model of contractualization between the digital factory and the ones that we had uh, in general in the cloud or licensed business where I come from, seems to work roughly. You do the same job. You're mutualizing a need for several entities, except for being several corporations. There are your several business units. But this kind of functioning seems to work. That and a lot of, lot of workshop to alleviate the equivox about language, because once again, in a marketer, data doesn't have the same meaning as we do in technology, and you need to find a new vocabulary to make sure that you stop, you know, basically getting irritated around the equivox and misunderstandings. All right, we'll, we'll have to leave it there. A round of applause again for Cyril. Thank you very much.